Looking through history's annals, one can amply prove that blind idealism is the root cause of the slaughter of millions, as one group works to force another to accept its illusory formulations for their vision of what ought to be. This is what leads me to offer a principle that will help you to predict the outcome in all arenas of human competition. Might is right. Might is right. A primer for fledgling misanthropologists. This simple sentence is actually an equation which stands for an axiomatic principle used for understanding the nature of human social interactions. Note that this is not a dictum that has any effect on the nature of objective reality. It is not pertinent to the inorganic. Rather, it is a measure of forces and vectors found in the exchanges between members of our species, from the level of one-on-one, -on -one, up to that of nation versus nation. In the province of human interactions, it is inexorably true and cannot be avoided. So, to be a master in the realm of human society, it is required that one flow along with this principle. The idealistic fools may scream that it is not fair, but then we Satans know that justice is relative and only lasts as long as one has the power to maintain it, either personally or through an allegiance with those who do. There is no exterior superior big daddy or, or karmic laws or, or balancer of the scales to maintain some objective standard in the games played on this small planet. Nobody is looking out for you, and Lady Luck is not going to drop by to make your number come up. We're on our own, and unless we grasp and apply these house rules, we'll leave this joint with our pockets empty and our asses reamed. So let us examine the implications of this elegant little principle. We have two terms on the opposite sides of the verbal equals sign. Equals sign. Might is the first. Seems obvious. Does it refer to sheer brute force? Only to those with a simplistic point of view. What might signifies in this context of human interactions is the position of power and thus control for the situation under analysis. In some contexts, the power position could be attained through brute force, but the rarity of this might shock the armchair theoretician. Here's an example. You encounter a thug in an isolated location. Both of you are unarmed and all other factors are equal. Both of you have the same level of fighting skills, endurance, and intelligence. The only element which we grant to be unequal is the strength of the opponents. Then, brute strength may be the deciding component in the outcome of this encounter. But even in such a simple situation, the observer will note that there are quite a few factors that must be considered to determine who truly is in the position of power. Who has the might? Only the naive in such a determination is obvious. In more elaborate social situations, assessing the many factors that determine who indeed has the might becomes rather a daunting task. Consider the complexities inherent in the event that one special interest group might be opposing another or in an instance of inter-tribal warfare, or when one nation might come into conflict with another. However, attempting to see with clarity and accuracy is the lot of those who would understand the true nature of the human animal. We must be diligent and perceptive if we want to retain some modicum of control over our lives. Might could mean superior weaponry, 
a larger body of armed troops, a better trained corps of soldiers. It could also mean a populace who is more dogged and resisting attack, having an uncompromising will, or simply being so numerous that the aggressor cannot prevail against such a mass of animal bodies. And this barely scratches the surface of the many elements that are involved in human interactions on a societal level, involving the elements of force. We haven't even begun to examine the levels of power inherent in cultures themselves and the living ideas in them that can overwhelm other cultures that might seem to have superior military power. Consider this. A well-armed man carrying grenades and an assault rifle is in the depths of a swamp. He wades through the muck in which there live hundreds of thousands of tiny leeches. One leech is clearly not a matter for our soldier, who doesn't even need to avail himself of his exotic weaponry. His mere fingers can make him the victor. Holding his gun over his head, he proceeds to the neck-deep ooze. Once he emerges, and then soon stumbles in a weakened condition, he begins to strip his clothes from his body and finds that thousands of tenacious mouths are now draining him of his life's blood. He tears them from himself, stomping them to death in his fury, but the wounds continue to bleed because of the anticoagulant employed by the small feasters. He notes, as his consciousness fades, that he is now too weak to rip the rest of them from himself. He has been vanquished. Groups of humans can be like these leeches in having the ability to overwhelm what looks to be a superior aggressor. The might in this encounter belongs to those little eager leeches, and they were merely trying to assert their view of what is right, their individual nourishment. nourishment. And that brings us to the second half of the equation. The term right. Right, in this context, does not mean true which I define as being wholly consistent with, with objective reality. Right simply means the subjective outcome desired by each of the participants in the conflict, which is under observation. Right is a matter of value judgment, not of determining objective facts. Naturally, most humans would like to think that their value judgments really should be seen as being objectively factual, and many religions and political organizations do claim that such is the case. We Satanists are well aware that such things are mere human convention, dependent upon culture and practice, not objective reality. We understand that all human values are subjective. They are based on each individual's axiomatic premises, his bottom-line concepts for his view of the universe and his place in it. Some claim these to be objective, but that is vanity or fanaticism. From this foundation arises the person's hierarchy of values. Does it matter if people don't understand the mechanics of this process? Most of them don't, but this is precisely how it works and it is as unavoidable as the laws of physics. So it becomes quite clear that the right in this equation is determined by the desires of each of the human participants. It is their ideal, their is to be. Of what significance is this for Satanists? Knowing this unvarnished truth about the human species, the Satanist makes it his business to be acutely aware of the balance of power in any situation in which he is engaged. He must also ascertain to the best of his ability the real agendas of the participants, their actual desired outcomes, not merely their stated aims. He must see the subtleties and note the delicacies in the war dance controlled by this equation. If he can see the essence of the situation, to whom belongs the might, 
he will then be in a position to make certain that his notion of right will be the one favored by the outcome, providing that he can place himself in the position of being the bearer or controller of this might. Satanist knows that the truly strong always triumph over that which is objectively weaker, and that the clever have the ability to rule the strong. As Satanists, we always choose to be counted among the clever. Here endeth the lesson.